Got some, uh, got some new trading cards here I'm gonna open up. Well, new as in they're still sealed, but old. So stick around and we'll see what's in these packages. Hopefully something good, but definitely gum. Very, very old gum. First up we have Laughs. The last trading cards were from 1991 and they were based around ABC's TGIF lineup from that time, namely Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, and Full House. These were those inoffensive sitcoms that were marketed as a block to keep people inside on Friday nights. And with these trading cards, I suppose every day could be Friday. Let's open these up, see what we have. First we have, ooh, Uncle Joey. Oh, Gibbler, what you doing now? Balky and Larry are out of sync. When a music manager offers Balky a deal for a dance style, Larry becomes Balky's talent agent. Oh, I'm laughing already. In case you're wondering what life with Urkel is like. Ugh, Balky, Larry, you two are such, such cards, no pun intended. We have the actual real actress's name, Kelly Williams. And there's a little bio about her on the back. She played Laura Winslow on Family Matters. Hey, it's Lori Lachlan. Shenanigans with Balky. See here, they give him his character's name, Eddie Winslow. As the second man, in quotes, of the Winslow family, Eddie has a lot of worries. I don't know why Larry's on this billboard, but he's climbing every billboard. And Mother Winslow. Who's hip? Who's happening? Who's the grandmother with a 90s kind of attitude? Why it's Mother Winslow, of course. She gives the Winslow family a great source of wisdom. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I got a double of Mother Winslow. I have two Mother Winslows. If I get three, then I think I win the jackpot. I also got two Olsen twins. You forgot him already? Yes, I'm sure you did. But that's Sam Gorpley. So in case you didn't know, this character was on Perfect Strangers and they spun her off into Family Matters. Whereas Urkel from Family Matters, I think appeared on Full House. So all three of these sitcoms exist in the same universe. Does that scare you? you sh it should. Stephanie Tanner, wearing her hip 80s sneaker sweatshirt. I wonder if her sneakers have pictures of shirts on them. Lydia Markham? Wow, they're really going for the, uh, the third tier characters on, on these cards, aren't they? Jesse Costopoulos, Sean Stamos himself. Another freaking Balky and Larry posing like idiots. Now we have the actor's name instead of Eddie Winslow, Darius McCrary. Ooh, John Stamos. Here's Mark Lynn Baker, his official actor's card. I think he gives this out at, uh, at uh, auditions. Oh, I got the Urkel card. I think that's worth 100 points. The second John Stamos, what is it, Christmas? Another Mark Lynn Baker. I'm getting doubles here. Another Steve Urkel. Hey, by the way, I'm up for trades, but, you know, I will these doubles, so if you want to... Trade me your other trading cards. Just drop me a line. Another Dave Coulier card. Uh, Bronson Pitchot. I think he does the same thing as Mark Lynn Baker. Just, you know, this is his calling card for auditions. And the worst ever picture of Jaleel, Jaleel White I have ever seen. I mean, this is worse than uh, grade school picture day. What does he do? Jaleel White appeared on TV for the first time when he was three. Yay! He was in a Toys R Us commercial, I believe. And I think I used that in one of my videos. That is the last cards. All right, so next up is Dinosaur's Attack. Dinosaur's Attack was a small series of cards from Topps released in 1988. Collecting all of these cards, which consist of uh, 55 cards, 11 stickers, gives you the full story. A freak accident transport dinosaurs to the present day where they wreak havoc. These were a spiritual successor of sorts to the 1962 trading card series Mars Attacks, which got a movie ad adaptation back in the 90s uh, from Tim Burton. Uh, these both, Mars Attacks and Dinosaur's Attack, were homages to B-movies. However, Dinosaur's Attack wasn't as successful as the Mars Attack series. Personally, I'm not into the shocking violence and gore depicted in this artwork. Um, I'm always, I'm kind of the squeamish type, and if you're that way too, I would recommend you skip this, this segment. The gum was on the back here, and the problem with some of these old cards is that the gum starts to seep into them, so that's nothing you could do about that. Dimetrodon. It's a three meter long dinosaur, so there you go. Taurus Trap, I actually remember kind of some of these cards, but yeah, you see there's like little story plot lines in the back of these. 
This is card number 54, which means this is pretty much the end of the story. So just a lot of havoc being wrecked. It is very well drawn artwork. I can't not fault that. And here's a kid shooting a shotgun through a dinosaur's stomach. Ankylosaurus or Ankylosaurus. And there's a sticker. The Soviets versus the Dim Dimetrodons. I can't even pronounce anything on these cards. Nuptial Nightmare. Oh, that's, that's pretty terrible. Cat Lady's Revenge. I actually remember this one. Ah, oh, Entombed. Blue Water, Savage Death. All right. So once again from Tops, we have American Gladiators. As you may have guessed, these are based on the 1989 syndicated television show. The original incarnation of this program lasted from 1989 to 1996. And in 1991, Topps commemorated the show's success with a line of trading cards, as you could see here. So one thing you'll notice is a lot of these things have pieces of puzzles, if you remember your garbage pail kids that you have to collect to put together. It's a sticker. We got a sticker. Uh, but yeah, knee-jerk reaction. There's, there's Zap. Dynamic duo. Everyone remembers Blaze. These are not cards I'll actively hunt down. Not that I was a big American Gladiators fan. I watched the show, but it's not something I needed to have in trading card form either. All right, like just candid shots of episodes. A well-deserved ovation. See, now this is a much better sticker. Look at that. The hard bike. Photo finish. What's on the back of these things? Very hard to read text because of the background. Maybe you could read that. Uh, Assault is always my favorite uh, event in the American, the original American Gladiators, and it's commemorated here on this trading card. Some more glamour shots of Zap attacking. Nitro was triumphant. Aren't you happy for Nitro? So this is the Joust. The Eliminator Treadmill. I, I, I kind of remember that too. All right, that was, that was American Gladiators. Let's move on to something more exciting. Finally, we have the... Pro Set Superstars Music Cards. Um, this dated from around 1991. And these were from that time when radio-friendly hair metal and the New Jack swing sound, along with some college radio staples like REM, were dominating the charts. Uh, this is right before grunge took over, so it was a weird time, interesting, weird time in music. There are 10 cards per pack, so we're gonna go through these relatively quickly. Unless I see a Marky Mark card, then we're gonna to have to stop for two minutes and discuss. First off, I wanna show you about the instant win game. Was that a winner? You could get a free rock and roll trip to London, free concert tickets, more than 10,000 great prizes. And you just could read all that on your own. We also have some legends like The Doors. Um, I'll be sure. I'm sure he will. Kings of the Sun. I don't know who these guys are, but I might have to look them up. If you like your rock and roll hot and simple, infectious and satisfying, then this group is for you, says Winnipeg Free Press critic Glenn Gare Smith about the Kings of the Sun. All right, I'm excited already. Oh, we got the Pretenders. Young MC. Blue Tears. <laughs> With strong ties to Henderson, Tennessee, the hard driving rock and roll group like Blue Tears. <laughs> Rest in peace, George Michael. Very 90s design around the side here. Blue tears. <laughs> Vanilla ice. Uh, historic concerts. They have concert posters on here too. Jefferson Airplane. My God, I can't read that. I'd like to offer you 10 cents off your next purchase of Superstars Music t-shirts as seen in the Pro Set Gazette. This beats damn collecting dudes. Eric Clapton. Black velvet if you please, Alana Miles. Ooh, Energy Orchid. What the hell are these people? Although formed in London in 1986, all six members of Energy Orchid, Bob Kennedy, Paul Toner, Spade McQuaid. Oh, these are not real names. Get the hell out of here. Kevin Breslin, that might be real. Joby Fox and David Toner. Oh, it's the Toner Brothers. Here's Blues Traveler. Not to be confused with Blue Tears or um, the Energy Orchid. No early 90s collection of music cards would be complete without MC Hammer himself. My God, the hair metal that... Here's the Hoodoo Gurus. Crow Mags. Circus of Power! Excel! I'm a big fan of spreadsheets. Okay, if you want some more terrible jokes, please subscribe, like, and comment. Don Clements, Adam Siegel, Sean... I know there's someone who's going to write me a nasty comment about how Blue Tears is the best band of the early 90s, and I should be shot, hung, 
drawn and or quartered. Here's some Billy Idol for you. Once again, I'll be sure, this is a duplicate. Ooh, giant. They were pretty big. That's a terrible joke. If you'd like more of these terrible jokes, please be, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Genesis, Nashville, Lost of the Runaways, England, members of Brothers, who cares? Doro. I don't remember her at all. Go-Go herself, Belinda Carlisle. Here is the harder, edgier Tiffany. Tiffany, where was this girl back in the day? Lynch Mob, which is... <laughs> I don't know how comfortable I am with that name of that band. Early 90s trifecta is complete of Vanilla Ice, MC Hammer, and I'll Be Sure. Big Brother and the Holding Company concert poster. They're legends, like The Doors. Force MDs. And this is not a Legends card, this is a regular card, and it's Kiss. They're perfect gentlemen. Tina Turner. Uh, we have another Alana Miles. I don't know why we, she needs two cards to herself. Here is Soul 2 Soul. Another famous concert for your approval. And here's Led Zeppelin. And you got some more coupons. And that's it. So a sane person might ask, Dave, what are you doing with all these trading cards? Why do you have them and why do you keep them? Why do you buy them? Why do you spend money? Why don't you go out and get a job? Well, first of all, I have a job. So I'm able to afford terrible things like this. But secondly, I like to keep them around as a nice little time capsule from uh, decades past. They're an interesting piece of uh, pop culture history and looking through them kind of brings me back a little bit. So, just got my back. Anyway, see you next time.